Hello again, I am Blunty, and are you ready for a fat stack of cracking vids all about this thing here and these things there? These are the Ryzen 5 chips officially launching today. I have had in for review and testing the Ryzen 5 1500X and the Ryzen 5 1600X. The Ryzen 1600X is a 6-core 12-thread CPU, stock clocked at 3.6 GHz and boosting up to 4 GHz. And the 1500X is a 4-core 8-thread unit, boosting up to 3.7. There is also the Ryzen 5 1600 and 1500, that's these without the X on the end, which are basically identical when it comes to the technology and the cores and the core counts and thread counts and all that sort of stuff. They're just slightly lower clocked and all Ryzen's are overclockable. There's no such thing as a locked multiplier when it comes to the Ryzen stuff, so kind of take that until with your artificially limited range. You can consider this video kind of an episode zero of the series of videos I'm going to be doing about the Ryzen chips because I just wanted to get a bunch of stuff out of the way in regards to what these are, what they're for, uh, the basic te technology at play, and the reasoning behind how and why I built this particular rig to test them in, and the likely difference between what I'm doing here and what some other reviewers are probably doing. Now AMD referred to the Ryzen architecture inside the Ryzen CPUs as a clean sheet design. They're focused on IPC, or instructions per clock, chasing the concept of more cores doing more work all at once instead of fewer higher clocked cores. What this means in the real world is that while in AAA games, which generally don't currently make full use of multi-core CPUs, or multi-threaded CPUs in particular, the Ryzen chips may not quite push the games quite as fast as similarly positioned Intel CPUs do, but the Ryzen chips also won't get as bogged down when asked to do other things in addition to gaming at the same time. They're going to be better at multitasking, at least in theory. We are going to test that, of course. In the context of what happens in a real and practical sense for folks like me, for example, the Ryzen chips are going to be quite an advantage for people who record and stream gameplay and edit and encode and process any kind of video. And I am going to have a series of videos specifically looking at how these new AMD Ryzen chips do under the demands of AAA game title streaming, where I'll be comparing the Ryzen 1600X at stock and overclock speeds, the 1600X versus the 1500X under the same conditions, and of course the 1600X versus the Intel i5 I have in that rig back there. Now, memory speed is vitally important to get the best out of Ryzen chips. They use a technology AMD rather dramatically called the Infinity Fabric. The Infinity Fabric is how the CPU complexes inside the chip talk to each other, so the faster your RAM is, the faster that works. As for my test rig specifically, I'm sure you will see today, as the embargo is up today, so there's going to be a bunch of videos everywhere all about this from your favourite tech YouTubers, um, you'll see them sort of pairing up the Ryzen 5 chips with sort of overclocked Titan X and Titan XPs and, and you know, 1080 Ti's and all that sort of stuff, just massively, massively sort of overcompensating with the uh, GPU in an effort to try and isolate that bottleneck in the system so they can see what the CPU does specifically. And that's all well and good. The videos are going to be very interesting. They're going to be full of charts and bar graphs and things like they always are. But I've always found that kind of dry and a bit boring. Interesting, technically speaking, yes, sure, fine. I, however, like to approach things, as many of you already know, in a real world sense. What is this thing going to actually do being used, how people actually use this thing in the real world. No one, practically speaking, is going to buy a Ryzen 5 chip and pair it up with a Titan XP. It's just not going to happen. That's a that's a stupid way to try and arrange your system. People who invest money in 1080 Ti's and Titan XP's are going to match it with a rig that has an i7 in it or a Ryzen 7 in it. Just, you know, if you're going high end, you should go high end all the way. So with an eye towards the real world and the kind of rig real people will really be building in the real world to do real things with, that's how I built this rig. Inside here is an affordable but gaming series MSI motherboard, the B350M Gaming Pro specifically. I've talked about that in more detail in the build video and all that sort of stuff. The RAM I've got in here is 3200 RAM that AMD sent me with the uh, sample chips for a review. It is clocked up to 2933 because I couldn't quite get it to 3200 and keep it nice and stable. It's a fresh and clean Windows install, of course, sitting on an SSD, the Western Digital Blue if you're curious. Uh, also, I've got a Corsair XTI SSD in there for all the games to load on. And finally, and more importantly, in a when you're talking about a rig like this that real people are going to be really using in the real world, uh, the video card there is an MSI Gaming X GTX 1060, 
which is kind of the it's a really really nice sweet spot for 1080p gaming and let's face it if you are building a gaming rig with a ryzen 5 chip in it chances are you are targeting 1080p gaming and yes that means in several instances the gpu is going to be a bottleneck to what the cpu is is trying to do but that's kind of the point here i want to see what the ryzen does in a system in a configuration that actually will be being used by people and see what that does to the games how much of a difference can the ryzen chip make stock overclocked versus the i5 in this sort of configuration where there are bottlenecks in the system elsewhere down the line now the review guide that amd sent me with these chips suggests that uh, the 1600x should be compared against the uh, 7600k that's an i5 the kb lake i5 i don't have one of those what i've got in that machine back there is the 6600k which is the skylake i5 uh, overclockable i5 speaking in practical terms for all intents and purposes they perform exactly the same anyway the kb lake is it runs slightly cooler it's very very slightly faster so you can possibly get a better overclock out of it but in general terms it's going to be identical anyway so that's 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 what i'm using for the comparisons here uh, my particular rig is overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz anyway which is actually a pretty respectable overclock for the 6600k chip anyway and again the reason i'm comparing uh, these two Ryzen chips against that rig and keeping it overclocked is because again that's how I use it in the real world and the whole point of these tests is I want to see how these systems perform in real world conditions there's no point clocking that back down when that's not how I use the damn thing people have got on my tits about that in videos before that's why I'm being specific about this I've had to explain it several times in comments I want to get it out of the way in this video this is how I use it in the real world so this is how I'm testing it with all of that broken down, and I think I've covered everything I want to talk about, I just wanted to get all that stuff out of the way so the following videos we can just focus purely on the performance differences between the different chips, between the overclock and, and the stock clocks, between these and the i5 I've got in the rig back there, uh, without sort of bogging those videos down with a bunch of this technical information that you kind of need to know. But uh, if you're just coming to a video to see performance difference, you can just do that. I figured that was a slightly more efficient way to do it instead of, like I said, bogging down the other videos with a whole bunch of information that doesn't need to be in every single one of them for context. So with all of that broken down, it is finally time to see what these bloody things do in the real world when you ask them to do real work. So stay tuned to the channel for those. There's going to be, I think, how many? Six? Seven? I think I've worked out. Something like that. It's been a very, very, very long couple of days. I've only had like barely a week with these things it was kind of a last minute thing to get this build done and for these to arrive and everything it's just uh, ah, worth it though really really interesting stuff coming so incoming is that fact stack of kraken vids all about the ryzen 5 stuff thanks for watching i am blunty we'll catch you next time go ahead and pop down in the down below area and uh, leave behind your expectations what do you think these things will do